and in time of war or something like that, I'd be happy to do it again. I wouldn't want to go through the same thing, so I would never want to go through anything like that again. My name is Sandlin Gillen. I was born in Richmond, Kentucky. 1925. I went to school in Morrow, Ohio. And that's the first time I ever heard or played basketball, and I got on the first team. My grandparents, they raised me until I got old enough to get a job, and I got a job in a factory that made paper. They had big sheets of paper, and they had to lift the paper, put it on a trimmer to trim the edges and make them smooth. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, by air, President Roosevelt has just announced. The attack also was made on all neighbors. I remember the when they announced over the radio about Pearl Harbor. I wasn't going to join voluntarily, but I got a letter from the president <laughs> saying you are to report at uh, Covington, Kentucky. I joined the Army. It seemed like all we'd done for probably a week or so was standing in line, getting shots and doing a lot of things that uh, I didn't understand at that time. I remember one time we had to crawl on our stomachs. They had barbed wire just above our heads. They had machine guns set up and they'd fire over her heads. And we had to crawl so many yards under that barbed wire. I didn't care for that. I was just a snot-nosed 18-year-old kid. I wonder what in the world I was getting into. But uh, I liked shooting the rifle, and I became a marksman. I was assigned to 106th Division at uh, Atterbury, Indiana. I was there until uh, we got orders to go overseas. We landed at La Havre, France. We went up through through France into, into Luxembourg. Oh, it was snow, cold, and they didn't give us any overshoes. We took over another outfit that had taken over the seed free line. We was uh, in pillboxes. Every night we had to go out of the pillbox and walk about a hundred yards, and we had to stay there, I think, about three or four hours each night to keep watch. We could hear the trucks and people talking. It seemed like they wasn't a hundred yards away from us. One morning, the captain said, everybody out. So we filed out of the pillbox, and we had our rifles and everything with us. And we was up on a, on a hill, like. And we could hear tanks rolling on the hill. The colonel of the outfit, he said to Put your, put your guns down. He raised a white flag. And here come the Germans up over the hill. And there they, uh, they uh, 
they took us prisoner. And they marched us, I think, for about two days. Put us on boxcars. We used to crowd it in there. We couldn't sit down hardly. The only way we could see out, they had a little window about so high, about so wide, way up at the top. And the only way we could see out was stand on somebody's shoulders. And I remember standing on somebody's shoulders and looking out. And this one house, not too far away, I could see and bomb that had it struck the house and the, it was all t tore up. Finally, they stopped the train at the town of what they call Bad Orb. Marched us through town and we put us in barracks then. The only feelings I had was just to stay alive and do the best I could. The only thing you could do. Yeah, the only thing you could do. Yeah. Breakfast, we got some kind of a piece of dark colored bread. Oh, it was terrible. And uh, at noon, we got a cup of soup. They can let us walk around. If we found any anything growing, like a dandelion or something like that, we'd pick that and take it into our camp or the bunk and and we'd boil some water and we'd wilt that dandelion or something in there to give us something to eat when we got a piece of bread. On the bunks that we had, we had uh, gunny sacks filled with excelsior. They had like a small tree pole that they laid that on. It wasn't very good. It wasn't very good. There was a man he and I kind of chummed around together. He was Jewish. One day, one of the Germans came in and they wanted to know who was Jewish. And I told him, don't volunteer and tell them you're Jewish. He hesitated and finally he said, they'll find out. They'll know by the name. And he raised his hand and they took him out and never heard from him since. All I could do was think of the worst things that possibly could. One morning, we heard some rumbling going around. We opened the door and looked out and here American tanks came rolling in. We had a big iron gate over the road that came in. They just run them tanks right over. A very happy day. Day flew us to France, to Camp Lucky Strike. They had camps there named after cigarettes. They gave us what we wanted to eat and we ate too much and got sick. Finally they put us on ships, shipped us back home. When the ship came in the harbor in New York, we passed the Statue of Liberty. I was so thankful. So thankful I was back home. 
when we got back and we was waiting in line, waiting for a bus to take us home. I passed out. Next thing I knew, I was in the hospital. I had hepatitis, they said. They'd come in about every three hours and they'd give me a shot. Well, one day, the girl came up to the hospital to see one of the fellows just to sit and talk with him. And her friend came along and I thought, boy, she's a little pretty girl. That's where I first met my wife. We had a wonderful family, four boys and two girls. And I thank the Lord every day for that. We moved out here to Iowa. We moved out to Elk Run Heights. We had gravel streets. <laughs> you leave the windows open in the summertime, and the dust would come in through the windows and just get over everything in the house. The mayor at that time was my next door neighbor. I went and my neighbor and I says, uh, Howard, I'm going to run for mayor against you. I just don't think you should have some problems that seem like you're having here. So I won and I won. I was mayor for, I think, 22 years. We blacktopped the streets. We put sewer in. We hired more policemen. And uh, we just tried to do things to build our town up. So I think it's a nice little town. I guess as long as you are able to get around and be healthy, you should thank the Lord for our country and what it stands for. It stands for freedom for each individual. I thank the Lord for that.